world and our star guest tonight. Yeah, man, I'm not sure where he's calling from, but I can tell you that on the phone right now is legendary Detroit rocker Ricky Rat. How howdy, bro? Thanks for coming back to the show. Oh, how's it going? Thanks so much for having me back. Yeah, where are you at tonight? I am at home, so I'm over here in uh, the east side area of Detroit. Nice, nice. How are things in Detroit these days, man? I've heard it became, uh, with a lot of the changes in the auto industry years ago, it became sort of um, uh, more of a kind of on the downfall, then it came back up with like an artistic sort of community kind of thing. Uh, yeah, Detroit's always had kind of a lot of ups and downs for a long time, really. Probably since about, you know, you know, shortly even after the 67 riots, you know, a lot of uh, stuff started going downwards and in the auto industry and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, we've always had a very strong uh, musical and uh, artist community here. And it seems like in the last bunch of years, people are actually moving here from other places. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of a first. Yeah, I had, I had heard about that. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the prices of, of living in most places, you know, now uh, people are getting priced out everywhere, especially musicians and artists that live uh, on shoestring budgets. And, uh, you know, hey, don't want to let the secret out entirely, but yeah, the Detroit area is still a pretty affordable place to live. Yeah, so I've heard. So I've heard. Yeah, that's awesome, man, that you're still uh, located there as well. Yeah, it's home. Uh, I lived for a while in Indianapolis for a few years, a few years back, and uh, yeah, that's the only place I've ever lived away from Detroit, and I found I really missed it when I was gone from here, so uh, I, I don't know. I, I see myself staying here, at least for now. <laughs> right. Are the Trash Brats, I know you guys have been around a long time. Is the, is the band, I don't know how active you are, but are you still a band? Are you still doing stuff? Uh, you know, we do like a reunion type of show every few years or so. So we last played sometime back before the COVID years there, and um, I'm sure we'll probably be doing another at least Detroit show coming up again, you know, maybe next year or something. So it's, you know, we're not really an active band, so we just kind of get together now and then and play a, a show for uh, like old time's sake, pretty much. That's awesome. You know, I'm really happy with the fact that you sent me your new album in vinyl, no less, called Ghosts of Isolation, 12-inch vinyl. Super love the cover art, both front and back. Um, oh, thank you so much. And how's that been going with the with the reception for the Ghosts of Isolation album? Uh, so far, it's been really, really good. I mean, I, I, I'm really happy to hear the feedback. Uh, I always say I, it's good to get reviews of any kind I, I don't care if they're good or bad i mean i just like it when they're you know people are honest <laughs> what they think of the songs or the music or whatever and uh we get a lot of nice words from a lot of people that you know uh, seem like they enjoy the uh the variety of type of songs that are on it and uh a lot of people saying they feel it's my best stuff yet so that's always a good compliment so i really appreciate that and uh the record selling decently and of course we're in the age of where most people stream which is understandable so it's just good that the record's out there, you know, either way. But people can listen anywhere, and uh, if they're more of a vinyl record person, they can get it on vinyl, and there is going to be a limited CD release coming up probably in the next few months as well. Ooh. Yeah, that will be of interest to some people. And uh, for, yeah. for live streaming, if folks decided they wanted to do that, what would they do to get it for live for the live streaming version? Oh, well, it's, you know, it's pretty much all those i don't know all you know <laughs> all of them but i know of, you know spotify and apple music and youtube and uh, you know basically it they're not it's all in all the uh, regular streaming sites so whatever uh, perfect whatever people use they should be able to find it also thank you for sending me your six song ep called joyful rage i really dug that one a lot too great oh well thank you you're very welcome yeah i love the cover art on that as well that was super cool cover yeah, that was a, that was done actually when I was living in Indianapolis, and that uh, cover photo was uh, shot by uh, my ex girlfriend Jessica Brandstetter, who's a really fantastic photographer. And it was her idea actually. When you look at that photo, to see there's all these old flyers plastered everywhere. They're all like old trash brat type flyers and stuff. And that was kind of her idea to have that in the background. Yep, it didn't. Uh, I didn't. It didn't go unnoticed. I was like, this is so old school, and just a, <laughs> a, like a nod to like his past, and but you know, kind of showing that you're continuing. But the, the, here's part of you right there on the wall. You know, it's cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I, I really like that record a lot too, and, and I agree. I thought that that cover was very cool. Um, you know, 
I don't know what happened, and if and if you know if there's things you don't want to talk about, that's cool. But I saw you live the very first time was with the, the Dead Boys. You were playing bass with uh, Cheetah Chrome had reformed the right. band, as he has you know more than once one time in history. But this was a really right. particularly killer lineup. Like I went up there yeah. thinking, eh, it'll be okay at best, sure. and we completely were blown away. It was like a ten on a scale of one to ten, if I'm honest. Um, Jake Hout, you, yourself on bass, uh, Cheetah, Johnny Blitz. It was just amazing, and then um, next. Next thing I know, I'm being told by other people that like uh, Cheetah got rid of her. everyone's gone except for him and this and Jake and even Johnny right. even Johnny Blitz the drummer's gone. What happened? Yeah, um, well, you know, I <laughs> to be honest, I I haven't even um, talked to Cheetah at all uh, since that all kind of imploded. So I, I really don't even know um, you know what his plans are or um, you know what he's going to do going forward now. Um, I do, you know, yeah, I do know Jake is still with them, uh, but me, Jason, and, and Johnny are no longer involved in it, and uh, it just kind of, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I just kind of imploded, and I didn't even really, you know, didn't hear anything at all, so it was kind of just, just kind of ended. <laughs> wow, okay, so, but was it a good experience, and how long were you with the Dead Boys? Uh, let's see, well, I mean, we toured a lot, so it felt like a lot longer than it was, but, uh, you know, a good couple of years. Wow, and uh, I mean, to our credit, I mean, we we really worked our asses off out there. I mean, we we were all over the place, and you know, tour after tour, and uh, yeah, I felt I felt like it was a really good lineup too, and it was yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, definitely, there was a lot of crazy moments, <laughs> like any tour, and especially when you get these kind of characters all together, it was it really was something. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely really enjoyable while it lasted, for the most part. Oh yeah, there's like so many questions that I honestly would just love to ask, but I just won't. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> like, of course. I'll just keep them. And I'll, I'll just shut up. But um, yeah, sure. man. You know, another thing I'd like to bring up, man, is uh, I know there's a lot of people listening that are fans of the Bay City Rollers, and there's not a lot. I grew up with not a lot of guy friends that were into them like I was, and I was into their music hardcore. And I know that you are too. Absolutely. Uh, for me, it started when I was a kid in the 70s. I was a huge Kiss kid, mm. and the Rollers were, came close. And, of course, like a lot of people here in the U.S., the first song was Saturday Night. My sister bought the uh, 45 with a, a picture sleeve from our local Kresge, the local you know Five and Dime store. And uh, just hearing that song first, you know, made me basically fall in love with the band. And uh, then, you know, I started getting other records. And, you know, some of my earlier, you know, all those earlier hits, you know, he just hearing those songs like money honey and uh rock and roll love letter and all those kind of things so yeah i still got a lot of my old ac rollers memorabilia from when i was a kid you know the bubblegum cards and uh 16 magazines and all that stuff <laughs> that is so cool and you even included with uh, the albums you sent me uh, ricky was kind enough to send one of his bay city roller bubblegum cards which was so freaking cool <laughs> Well, there you go. I, I knew you'd appreciate it. I know. I knew it was going to a a, a rightful home. <laughs> yeah, just little things like that just make my day. You know. Oh, oh, right on. No, and I, I knew you'd appreciate it. And uh, you know, it's good to share stuff like that with you know other people that you know are going to appreciate stuff like that. Uh, it's good to kind of spread it around. And I think I hope I did. Now I think you've got a copy of the Pat McGlynn uh, Skies Are Blue tribute CD. Yes, I did, and it's 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 very good. It's awesome. I mean, uh, it's it's really well done. I'm still kind of like giving it some more plays to really absorb it better, because uh, the only place I have a CD player right now is in my car. Oh and yeah, with that being on CD, that's that's where I've been kind of giving it to spins when I can. But it, yeah, you did a great job with that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I know that you were we've talked off the air. You're a fan of Pat McGlynn and the Rollers, and uh, you got caught up recently with some some of the Pat McGlynn, the rarer stuff that we kind of traded and stuff. And yeah, man, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, it's always cool to find a fellow Pat or Rollers fan that's a that's a guy, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, it, it's amazing about the Rollers, and it's like it's so much stuff you can still find, you know, like because it, it, it's like even if you have all the main basic Rollers albums, just finding like out that you know certain members have solo things that were you know only available in other countries and so it's almost like it's never ending really God, it is <laughs> seems so like there's always stuff popping up you know it is such a cool rabbit hole for sure man you know yeah um what's up what's the next thing on your list what is your current happenings like you have any gigs coming up another you know any tours anything that you want people to know about yeah no you know not really any you know any big tours anything like that right now it's mostly been you know shows around the home base here and uh 
But I've been also uh, playing shows with uh, my buddy Mike Skill from the Romantics. Nice. Um, because he, uh, he he started doing his first solo stuff in the uh, last few years, recording some, you know, put out like kind of a digital single here and there, and he's got a full length uh, that's out now digitally, and it's going to be coming out eventually on vinyl. And uh, so you kind of, you know, kind of forming almost like a solo band thing, and we've had like some different people playing in and out of it. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. It also includes Brad Elvis, um, who, you know, the drummer of the Romantics, who's also got his band, The Handcuffs. Yeah, and, and he's, he's been a guest on yeah. the show, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you know his background probably from, you know, Screams and Elvis Brothers. and. Yep, we come from uh, we come from the same, uh, like, background of Central Illinois. That's right. Indeed you do. <laughs> yeah, and I noticed that Brad Elvis was on your um, your solo record, right? Yeah, absolutely. Him and his wife, one. Chloe, contributed uh, some backing vocals, and he did some percussion, and uh, Chloe did some excellent saxophone work yeah. on there as well. I loved Chloe's sax oh, work on there. That was great, man. Yeah, she she killed it, and it was whole album was recorded in Chicago, too. So see, there's kind of like this... Uh, chicago or illinois uh connection there <laughs> yeah that's really cool man and uh, yeah. ho- i hope to someday i uh, get to see you play live again whatever in some capacity and uh knock on wood yeah i hope so, <laughs> yeah, I, hope so. I mean i'm hoping maybe uh there's gonna be more shows um you know gearing up here with uh this, the mike skill band um we just played in actually so in chicago we just played in chicago uh the other weekend it was a really fun show and uh so hopefully, you know, we'll get out and about maybe with that band a little bit. So maybe maybe there we can cross paths somewhere. Yeah, weren't you in St. Louis recently also? No, um, I'm trying to think. I saw that photo on Facebook. It said maybe it was a, t- a St. Louis friend of yours. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what that was. That was an old shot from one of the Dead Boys tours. Okay, yeah, that was a cool pick. Cause I used to, I, I've always had a soft spot for St. Louis because I lived very close to there for a while in, in, in my teen years. Yeah, St. Louis has definitely been a fun city, you know, uh, uh, you know, as much as I know of it from touring through it over the years, you know? Yeah, definitely a rough place, but uh, man, the history there, man, Chuck Berry and all that good stuff back in the day. Yeah, I wish I would have seen him when he was kind of like, had that like, regular weekly gig or whatever it was at oh, the Berry Hill Club. Uh, you know... I was- I heard stories from people. I never got to see it, though. <laughs> you know, same here. My daughter, my youngest daughter, Audrey, and I, many times were like, hey, Chuck Berry's going to be at Blueberry Hill. Let's go. And we just never went. And then when he passed, we both looked at each other. Why didn't we ever go? And we were like, dude, we were two, right. like, two and a half hours from there, you know? So. I know. It's almost like I think sometimes we all take some things for granted. And so much of our, uh, you know, our favorite rock and rollers now, everything's getting older and people are passing and. You know, it's like, wow, you know, we're lucky we're the age we are. We got to see, <laughs> you know, as many good ones as we did. But, yeah, now, you, you, yeah, it's more than ever you realize if you have a chance to see, see someone you want to see, it's like, go do it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right there, man. It's just the fact that we're even alive is a blessing and a miracle, really, for me. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, and in those days, you just, you know, you don't think about it. You think, I'll see Chuck Berry again, or I'll see... Uh, the Ramones again, or I'll go see Johnny Thunders next time. You, oh, through, you know, I all know. that kind of stuff. <laughs> yep, amen, man. And Iggy Pop, God bless him, he's still doing it. So if you guys are listening, you're Iggy fans, go see him while you can. He's worth it. Abs- absolutely. I hope he. I hope he does do some uh, U.S. dates soon. I don't blame him for wanting to, you know, do a lot of stuff in Europe because <laughs> it seems like in Euro- Euro- Europeans really uh, still appreciate this kind of real rock and roll stuff a little bit more than the U.S., I think. Well, you know, all my life, man, ever since I started, just like you did, well, I started in the 80s, I don't know if when, when you started, but I did, like, about 83, I kind of got into this music scene of singing and all that, but um, I always heard, even since then, all my punk and rock friends would go, oh, man, you got to go to Europe because they actually respect you and they'll pay you and treat you well like they do, yes. like, regular rockers here. I'm like... It's so funny, regular rockers versus punk rockers, and it's just always been silly. But yeah, in Europe, they appreciate right. they appreciate the good stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've been fortunate to tour there a lot with my buddy Kevin K, who you know really established himself over there really well by just going over there and playing his ass off. And um, so, and we were old friends, you know, from his old band, the Road Vultures, the Trash Brats toured, played together, and that. So yeah, then I started touring with them you know, over there in his band too. And I mean, we went all, we've been all over the place and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you, once you go to Europe and you get it, you get a taste of that. It's almost like, yeah, I kind of want to keep playing here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Makes sense, brother. And I really yeah. appreciate you, um, taking the time to come on the show tonight. I think we're going to follow up our talk with a song from your new isolation, the ghost of isolation album of uh, the song we're going to play is actually the title track. 
awesome. Yeah, I, cool. I thought, you know what, what, why not play something that represents the actual title track? So Sister Tracy's getting that queued up for us, and um, it's a th three minutes and 14 seconds. I guess it doesn't probably need a lot of introduction. No. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a name like Ghosts of Isolation, I think we can all relate to where your mind was at when you wrote that one. Yep, and the, the, even like the cover artwork of the album is kind of a reflection of, um, if anyone was saw me on Facebook, I did a thing when the quarantine and the lockdown first happened, I started doing these acoustic video songs to kind of amuse myself and amuse others, and it turned into me playing like songs for like 160 days in a row. Wow. <laughs> too cool. and so that covers kind of like people, if they watch my videos, they'll be familiar with that kind of setting, the couch and you know, it's like my friend would be like, you know, just shooting the videos and we try to do different little setups and, you know, put different things on the table and I'd have different outfits on. It just yes, I see the little skull. Up. I see the little so, skull on the table. <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, so that cover even is going to always remind me of the, just that period because that, you know, it's from that time. Right on. Awesome. Well, thank you, brother. You have a great rest of your evening. We'll definitely be playing your album on the air and at home, and uh, we hope to Appreciate run, run in. I'll definitely be in touch and hope to uh, rock out with you down the road, bro. Well, again, thanks a lot, you guys, for having me on once again, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, Ricky. Thank you. Yeah, take care, bro. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.